Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Saturday Morning Real Estate Marketing Show with Ruthie Rock's Ruth Allbrand, and I am Marketing Max. Today, we have a guest from MDI Security. His name is George Massius. He sells uh, commercial and residential security systems. And with what's going on in the country this year, I know a lot of people are concerned about making sure they keep their property intact. And one of the ways that real estate agents can really uh, provide an additional service that differentiates themselves from the marketplace is teaming up with someone that uh, can help them with their security needs and concerns. So, but before we get to George, Ruth, what is happening in Las Vegas? Uh, let me, George, I'm just going to put you in the lobby and then we'll bring you, you back. Okay. So I'm going to put you down there for a minute. <clears throat> lots of things, lots of things. First of all, there's 101 days until 2021. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right around the corner. <laughs> right around the corner. Absolutely. And um, we are uh, beating last October's records by a 10, 11%. And agents are closing 106 transactions a day, which is absolutely mm. awesome. Yeah. Oh, he's back. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Um, let me hide him again so we can see this on the screen. Um, so anyway, uh, and compared to last year, we're just about, we're 94% of last year. And with that pandemic, March, April, May, that is phenomenal. You know, we had those three, absolutely. four months in the red a little bit. And I just see, predict that by the end of the year, we're going to be in the green, meaning that we are going to sell more homes in 2020 than we did in 2019. Wow. it's a bold prediction here, Ruth. Well, I, you know, it, it isn't without some uh, research. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we have Lawrence Young here on the screen, and he is the chief economist for the National Association of Realtors. And he is saying that existing home sales grew for the fourth consecutive month in September to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 6.54 million. Hmm. And that is up 9.4% from the prior month and nearly 21% from one year ago. Now, this is across the United States. This uh, is not Nevada or Las Vegas. Sure, sure. But, but this is great news. And the median existing home price was $311,800. And that's 15% more than in September of 2019. So people who bought their homes in 2019 have enjoyed a 15% hike in their home equity and their, you know, and that percentage of their net worth increased as well. So that is really good news across the nation. And the total housing inventory is declining from the prior months and uh, and one year ago to 1.47 million, mm. which is only enough to last 2.7 months. And that is a record low at the current sales price. So we are setting all kinds of records in real estate. There's more than seven in 10 homes sold in September 2020, 71% were on the market for less than a month. So they're wow. flying off the shelf like they pancakes are. or toilet paper, whichever you get. <laughs> so <laughs> existing home sales continue to grow at a frenzied pace, Lawrence Young is saying, eclipsing a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 6.5 million, 6.5 million up 9.4% from August and an increase of nearly 21% from last year. Wow. So that is my bold prediction research. <laughs> <laughs> No, it sounds like it. I mean, everything is heading in the right direction here. It'll be interesting to see. You know, one of the, the concerns that a lot of people have uh, is next year with uh, the moratorium eviction going away and the forbearance uh, agreement starting to come due. But I have a feeling that uh, things are, aren't are going to work out. No no one has three to four or five homes on stated you know loans right now. Yeah, like right. they had in uh, 2008, 2009. So there's not going to be some this big, huge crash that everybody's anticipating because uh, I don't know, you know, in fact, more and more people have you know only one home or have been waiting for the last decade to try to get back into the real estate game that I know of versus uh, the, the latter where, you know, back in the day, you'd have conversation and people talk about how they had uh, two, three, four, five homes here and how they got it with uh, next to zero down on their mortgages. So uh, it's going to be interesting. And I think the real estate market is going to surprise a lot of everybody, especially here in Las Vegas. Well, I think what people don't realize and they, you know, everybody goes toward that uh, fear frenzy mm -hmm. uh, marketing uh, media, but 
we have over 300 homes that we manage for owners and we have less than 5% that I have some type of financial um, problem right now, but the own, the owners are working with them mm-hmm. and the tenants are working with the owners for some type of a payment plan, because guess what? They have to live somewhere. <laughs> they have to, right. So they might as well stay where they are, work out a plan to pay what they owe and they won't get evicted. Exactly. I mean, yeah. I mean, we always have evictions, but then, you know, people have to find another place to live. So that, that I think people miss that part of the equation. <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So I think that we're just going to be fine next year. I think we're going to just, uh, uh, I can't wait for Buffini's bold predictions, December the 8th, I think it is. Hmm. I keep reminding everybody because Buffini has, uh, you know, a straight line to uh, the, gov- the government uh, agencies, uh, uh, um uh, the government agent, the mortgage agencies, and he, and other chief economists like Lawrence Young. So I know that he is already preparing for his bold predictions for 2021, and I think that that that's when everybody might start believing because I'm going to spread the word. Right, right, December eighth, <laughs> right? That's December eighth. Yeah. December eighth. Right. Now Can't let's wait. see. I think we lost. We lost George. Did we lost George? Yeah, we lost George. Uh, George, let's see. Let me. Talk for a second and, oh, he's coming back. He's coming back. <laughs> I know. I love technology. It right. is great. You have to be brave to do this, I tell you. <laughs> you, you really do. And yeah. you can't get flustered, right? Because <laughs> things like this happen all the time. Yeah. And uh, There he is. There's George. All right. Welcome, George. Yeah, welcome, George. Thanks for coming on the show. <laughs> so before I you know, ask you questions about the security and stuff like that, I always ask every guest on the show, uh, are you an original Nevadan or are you a transplant from somewhere? And if so, where? Okay. So I originally started out California. Oh, okay. Moved to Illinois. And then I graduated high school at Silverado High School in 1999. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm a graduate from out here. And then I went to uh, back to Illinois, Colorado, graduated college, have a business degree, um, was in education. And then from education, went into pharmaceutical sales and then kind of landed right back into security. I actually uh, was doing a presentation, was approached by a gentleman during a presentation I was given at the college about going into security and being a consultant and training their staff on um, how to sell a tangible and intangible product and mm-hmm. being able to sell over the phone for their authorized dealers and not have to actually be in the home to book appointments. So I started doing some consulting work and then as I was doing the consulting work, kind of found a niche in it and I was able to take my personality and I was able to take what I knew about about selling and explaining to customers and I was able to find a spot for me in the industry and from there it just kind of took off but I was residential for the longest time and then jumped into commercial and then was hybrid all the way through. No, oh, fantastic. fantastic. So I mean, my, my first actually question, you know, with what has happened uh, during this year with the whole COVID and the you know, pandemic here, uh, mm-hmm. how, how did you guys adjust your selling style? Because before, I mean, a lot of security companies do like the door knocking, all right, mm-hmm. in neighborhoods and stuff like that. And obviously that was uh, probably probably not allowed probably by ordinances and stuff like that <clears throat> for a while. Yeah. How, how did you guys adjust to, to reaching the end client and commercial clients and things of that nature in your sales and marketing process? For the longest time, I was ADT's largest subcontractor in the Midwest. So we did a lot of their work. I was on a lot of their projects. Mm-hmm. So my name had gotten out there. So in the beginning, I'd say my first, my first 18 months, I was, out in the, I was out in the field. I was out there knocking on doors, going business to business, passing out cards. And I got a phone call from, from one of my uh, past customers that I had did the installs for. And he said, hey, I want to bring you into the commercial world. And I was like, oh, we're not ready for commercial. There's no way we could do commercial. He's like, mm-hmm. let me give you projects. So I started doing these gas stations through – um, through Illinois, Chicago, and the next thing you know, I was up in Wisconsin. I was in Indiana. And the next thing you know, that company was bought out by ADT. And then, lo and behold, now I'm doing 179 all these a year so on wow. remodels. And so, next thing you know, I'm doing all these big commercial jobs. And before I know it, my name's out there. Everyone knows. And Illinois, and everyone always says that you got to call the alarm guy. You know, I here he is. Call George. Call mm-hmm. MDI. So now everything, everything's M- MDI in Chicago. Everyone knows who MDI is. We do large union projects in the city. We've got 
small little residential houses that we do. So there's no job that's too big and there's no job that's too small for us. We, we mm-hmm. want to help the customer. And that's kind of where we've come in. I'd say clutch right now is <clears throat> like I wrote down some prices. Like I have customers that have shown me their contracts. Some have $1,800 for equipment. That's three doors, one motion, a panel, and that's one camera. They're paying $1,800 for that equipment. Then they get, they don't have that money. So that alarm company, that's a big alarm company. They say, hey, let's, we'll break it up into payments for you. You can pay $79 a month for the next 60 months. Well, that's $2,460 in equipment. That's, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of money to come out of pocket. Where if someone comes to us for that same exact package, they're looking at $599. You break okay. it up for 60 months. For just the equipment alone, it's $10. For the monthly monitoring, it's 38 So a customer that's having a financial situation to where they're not able to come out of pocket, they're able to come to us for $48.99 and we'll cover their equipment for them. We'll waive wow. their installation and it makes it more affordable. Because I said, there's one thing that my company that will never do, will never let money get in the way of protecting what matters most and that's your family. And I'd say that's yeah. kind of what sets us apart. And when I sit in front of a customer and they're like, I just had Vivint here, I know it's gonna be a lot of money. It's, you know, we were looking at a price tag of, of $3,500 and this is what we want. And I said, well, you know, we're a little different. We don't have large overhead. Uh, we don't have 100 trucks driving around out there. We don't have 17 offices across the United States. You know, we kind of keep it. We kind of keep it to where it's still family oriented. So where when you call in, you you can talk. You can talk to me still. I'm the I'm the owner of the company. I'm the CEO. Right. You can still get on the phone and say, Hey, I want. Can I talk to George? And somebody within my group is going to say, Well, this person knows. George, so we want to get him on the phone with him. And I'd say that's the one thing that sets us apart is we're, we're, we want to treat you like a family. We don't want to treat you like a business. Right. We don't want to just know you by your account number. We want to know you by your first name. And I'd say that's the one thing that during this whole situation that we've been going through in, in the world has kept us, you know, our doors still open. Because I can tell you right now, off the top of my head, I can name 10 people that I know have closed their doors because they, wow. couldn't, they couldn't survive it because they depended on that door knocking. They depended on that, that mass marketing that they just don't have the revenue for anymore. And they have the customers that can't pay their monthly payments anymore. Well, they can't pay their monthly payments anymore because you set them up at $79. You set them up at $118 a month where our customers are sitting at $38 a month and at $49 a month, 54, depending on what they get and what, how big their package is and how many cameras they have, how much data they're keeping. Those are the things that kind of take us to a whole different level. And I can tell you right now during this whole entire thing, I've had zero customers not pay me a month on their monthly monitoring. Wow. Zero customers. And I can tell you right now, I've had customers, they'll have one offs every once in a while. They'll call me and say, hey, can you run my payment one extra the day later because I'm, I'll have the money in there. And I say, hey, you know, we can throw it to the next month if you want. We can skip this month for you if you're having a, a, a financial crunch. And they love that about me. But you know what? None of them ever want to do that because I'm so good to them they want to be the same way with me. And then at the end, it's it's a partnership. Mm-hmm. I'm going to protect you and you. And all I ask my customers to do is just refer me to one person. That's it. Just one person, I'll be happy and you'll get you'll get discounts. I'll, I'll take care of you. I'll send you out, you know, like when we get new cameras that come in, we have customers that we box it up and we send it right out to them. Like, oh, well, you might have sent this by mistake. I said, no, I wanted to update your, update your camera. I'll have a technician out there within the next couple of weeks to install wow. that. That's kind of the stuff that we do. It kind of sets us apart. I think that helped us during this time. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, ha- have you, in addition to getting new business, are, are you just running off of referrals or, or how are you marketing uh, the business so that you can reach a little bit more homeowners and more commercial agents? All, all referral based, all referrals. They see us in these, they see us in the businesses, they see us in a CVS pharmacy, you know, doing the, uh, the changeovers when they put those minute clinics in, we're out yeah. there right now doing those. And I have employees approach me saying, Hey, do you do homes too? I'm like, yeah, we do. We do everything. What do you need? And they tell us what they need. I write it down right there on the spot. I said, and I handed my business card. I'm like, oh, you're the owner? I said, yeah. I said, any new projects that we get, I'm in the field on those projects. I'm still out there seeing everything firsthand. And that will never change. I won't be that guy that just sits in an office on the third floor and has everyone out doing all the work. And then they're like, oh, where's the, where's the owner? Or where's George at today? I'm going to be in the field doing what I do best. And that's meeting with my customers, doing my installs, programming the systems and making sure that in the end I can hand over a product that they can work with and that they're comfortable with. And I know firsthand that it's being done the right way because I'm in the field working with my guys. Right. Right. Fantastic. Fantastic. So what brought you to Vegas uh, back in the day? I, 
I love Vegas. I love the atmosphere of if it's three o'clock in the morning and I want to <laughs> go get something to eat or I want to go out, I can go out. I right. can go and I can walk down the strip and I can go into a casino. I can go sit in a cafe and grab a coffee or grab something to eat. I just, I, I love the atmosphere. I love the environment. I, I love the, uh, the temperature. You know, yeah. in <laughs> Illinois, you can't sit. I can't sit outside like this right now. Right, right, exactly. So I'm, I'm interested. I'm curious personally to hear some statistics. I don't know if you have any related to like crime in here in Las Vegas and break-ins and stuff like that. Is I mean, what's it? What's it like here in Vegas versus like a market like some some of the cities in Illinois and and other states and stuff like that? I I would I can tell you this firsthand. Vegas has more break-ins at night than they do during the day. Cause it's mm-hmm. a, it's the city of nightlife. So if someone's going to break in someone's house, it's going to happen at night where for us on the, in the Midwest, um, 67% of the break-ins occur during the day. Oh, wow. Because that works. And then there's, there's really not that huge, that huge expansion of nightlife. Think about if you've got everybody out on the strip, you've got all the employees. When do you need to staff them? You need to staff more people at night right, to kind right. of accommodate that wow. crowd and to make sure you take care of your customers. So you're gonna have more break-ins here during the midday during that mid shift time from probably I'd say probably from four o'clock on that'll be your, that'll be your big spread. Cause everyone else is sleeping, getting ready to go to work. And I can tell you that first, first hand is I've, I watched my, my aunt and uncle who live out here. I've watched my uncle go all the way through and he was, he worked midnights. So I would see his sleep schedule. I knew his sleep schedule, his guy's sleep schedule. And then just from, just from my friends in, in person working here, and here, like, so what, what shift are you on? Oh, I'm, I work two to 11. I'm like, do you, do you like that? Like, well, that's when we're busy. That's when the tips are there. That's so everyone wants to be out there during that right. time frame. So that leaves your home, that leaves your home wide open. So it leaves you at a potential risk for something to happen. And with our systems, it's, and it's no different than anybody else's system. The only difference is, is you get affordable and you get me. <laughs> you can reach me. All right. So what are, what are, from a consumer end, here george you know i mean mm-hmm. sometimes you feel alarm companies or like solar companies like whatever you know like cable companies right they kind of lump all those kind of services in together mm-hmm. and it's like you don't know which one to choose and other than price and and maybe you give us some of the things that consumers can really think about right when they when they choose a different security system what should they be looking out for you know what some of the features that are critical and some of the features that are just fluff mm-hmm. right i mean can mm-hmm. you can you share with some of those things okay so everyone loves glass break sensors. I'll go to a house and they'll have 14 glass break sensors. Let me tell you something. If you have crank out windows, glass break sensors are doing you no good. Hmm. Sliding windows, they're doing you no good because 90% of the time you can pop, I can pop a sliding glass the window. I can pop that open, no problem. Lift it up, get in your house. Nobody's breaking windows to break in a house. That doesn't happen. No one's walking around with a crowbar, knocking on your window. And <laughs> if they're coming in, they're coming in through your sliding glass door in the back of your house. They're not coming in the front the front door because everyone sees your front door. They'll come in through the side doors or they'll come in through your back door. It's mm-hmm. a lot easier to kick in your door than it is to break a window because think about it. People have their windows open. People are out. And I've noticed this in, in Vegas. People leave their doors open. Their yeah. doors are wide open. They hear things. When people hear things, we're nosy by nature. Mm. We're like, what's that? What's going on? And you look. So if they're going to break in, they're going to kick it open. You don't need a ton of glass break sensors. If you've got some areas that you feel like maybe someone might be able to break a window and, and reach in and get to your door lock and unlock it, put a glass break sensor in the back of your house is fine, but you don't need any more than two. Two, Any more than two in a home is, mm. is crazy. In your basement, you don't need to do the whole basement, all the windows, and then put one motion detector down there. Cause as soon as somebody gets in there and they get in the main, the main part, it's going to go off. You know, it, it's going to go off. If you're going to put your money anywhere at all, I'd say put your, put your money back in your pocket and use it on getting <laughs> real door locks and, and door locks yeah. to work, uh, upgrade, get yourself a Z wave device that you can, um, punch in a code and then the door automatically locks for you that you can track and make sure your doors are locked because it's, it's great that you have an alarm system, but it's not so great when you leave your doors unlocked and people can get in and you're like, did I lock my back door? Now you can tell. Now you have an app that tells you if your door is locked or if it's not locked. Now mm-hmm. we have devices we can put on your overhead garage door to say, hey, did I close my garage door? Did I leave oh. and a cat come running in or something 
get in front of my sensor that brought my door back up because how many times have we've have we've done it where we've hit our button on our garage door and pulled out and drove away and, and said did i close my garage door did it <laughs> all the door? time so put your money back there get yourself a tilt sensor on the garage door huh. get a sensor that sits on the very very top of the garage in the middle and when the door right right raises up it actually hits a little trigger inside there and it opens the it opens up the um the contact and it lets you know that the door's open so put your money there in those spots and stay away from the, uh, oh, you need a glass break sensor in every room or you need a motion in every single room because you really don't. I, I do I do free sensors on any kid's windows. So I don't charge my customers. If they're getting a basic kit and they got two bedrooms that are on the first floor and they have kids in those rooms, I give them a free door, I give them a free door window sensor for that window because nothing you'll never sleep better with the peace of mind of knowing that if somebody opens up a window in your kids' room you're going to wake up to it right away if someone's able to pick that lock on there and get it to slide right open you don't have to worry about it anymore it takes the fear and you're able to sleep better and i've and i have customers and i can get them on this next time that'll tell you i before i had a security system i didn't i didn't realize i wasn't sleeping as well as i do now that i have one because it gives you that peace of mind and that's what people are paying for pay for the peace of mind but pay for it at a at a realistic cost and stay away from the people who want to make a million dollars on one customer my theory is if i have <laughs> if i have a, a million customers and i make one dollar on each one i still make a million dollars i might have to work harder to get those million customers but i'm still a millionaire versus the people who want to spend they want to walk into a house and, and have a customer spend thousands and thousands of dollars and they feel great about themselves and they walk out. Well, guess what? That customer isn't going to refer you anywhere because in the end, they're going to get that buyer's remorse and they're like, oh my God, I spent all this money. They're going to do research. They're going to see what they really could have spent and then you're never going to get a referral out of them. Or if you go into a customer's house and you treat them like, like it's your mom or it's your grandma or it's your aunt, it's your uncle, if you treat them like that and they feel like they're a part of you, They'll refer you and they'll push you out and they'll say, hey, I'm only paying $38.99. And the neighbor next door is going to say, well, I have this I have, I have, have this system in here and I'm paying $59. What, what do you have extra? Well, uh, this is what I have. And they find out they have the same stuff and someone's paying $20 more. They get mad. And I can tell you right now, I've been on the receiving end of the big, big companies like Stanley calling me saying, hey, you can't charge monthlies like that. And I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean I can't charge monthlies like that? We charge by the square foot. I need you to get on board with us. I'm never going to be on board with you, Stanley. So if you're listening to this out there, ADT, Monotronics, Vivint, I'm never going to be on board with you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to set the price margin with you guys. I'm not going to be a part of that because believe it or not, there's a group out there and they set these price margins and they say, hey, we're going to be in this area and this is where we're going to be at. And they won't bid across the board against each other. If they're in one state, like California, for instance, there's companies out there that do the work for the same same exact companies, and they won't bid across the board if they know that that's some that's such and such company's territory. This is this guy's territory. They won't bid on that job. They'll leave it and let him make his money, just like they'll leave it and let them make their money here. I'm never going to do that. I'm just not going to be a part of that. I want my company to be bigger and better, and I want it to be I want it to be a family in the end. I want it to feel like you're part of our family. Like when you see us out you'll say, that's my alarm guy, you know, and that's, that's what I get. And that's why I get that is because I make them feel good. And, I'm, and I make them feel like they're not getting ripped off with paying $20 extra a month. Cause you're really not getting anything for that extra $20 a month. Right. Other than when we hit a situation like this, you could really use that $20 extra a month to feed your family that $20 extra a month to put it in your gas tank. So you can get somewhere, you know, it's just for me, I don't ever want security to be a matter of can I afford it or can I not? I want security to be what can I what what should I do with my house and how can you help me protect it? That's what I really want it to be. I don't want it to be anything else. Hmm. Got it. No, that's 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 a great philosophy. Uh, so are 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 you contracted with a like who provides the actual equipment security? Do you have contracts with with the the manufacturers and stuff like that? And I I have. I have two big manufacturers I use for mm, yeah. in commercial. Um, I go through for buying my buying my material. I go through Annexter. I don't go through anybody else but Annexter. Derek Cahill, he takes care of me. If I need something, I can text this guy at three o'clock in the morning, and I'll get a response. What do you need? I'll put the order in for you right now, mm. I, dude. I appreciate. It. Thank you very much. Um, I go through for my small business and my commercial. I use uh, Alula, and Alula has been huge for me. I'm able to take all of my customers put them on a platform 
and I could actually open them up at any moment <clears throat> and I can tell you if they're online or offline. So if they, if they lost signal, if they're, if they're low, if their batteries, if they're say their electricity went out mm. and they're out running on their backup battery, if they lose that backup battery, I get an alert, let me know that, Hey, something happened here and I can reach out to my customer. I can say, Hey, you know, I noticed your alarms offline. And we have a team that does that to let them know when they go offline. Same thing with their wireless cameras. I can let them know when their wireless cameras go out. But the cool thing about that is with the wireless cameras, with our system is if you're working on our wireless network and your wireless goes down, our cameras are still recording. They're saving to the chip that's actually in the camera. And as soon as your internet comes back up, it uploads that feed back into the cloud. So you never lose that security. Oh, fantastic. But more importantly, it's just Alula. I love Honeywell. I'm a big Honeywell guy. Um, Vista 20s all day long. Vista 128s. Firelight for my fire panels. Um, if it's, I'm an old fashioned. Right. If it's not broke, don't fix it. There's <laughs> no reason for you to jump around to something different every single time. Pick something, stick with it, make it great, learn it, be the professional in that field. Right. I, I'm not a big advocate of someone's like I got 19 different systems that we use. There's no way anyone knows 19 systems really well. It, that, that's right. impossible. So my the reason I ask that because you're you're not a wholesaler for ADT or Vivint or any of those guys, and nope. and who actually provides the actually like call center service that you know uh, alerts you know customers when their alarm goes off and stuff like that. We go through uh, Cops Monitoring. That's who does all okay, of them. UL listed. They're a big facility. They've got multiple locations throughout the United States. Which to be UL listed, you have to pay, have a contingency plan as well. Is what we refer to it as. So they have three separate locations that are spread out throughout the United States. So it, say something on the East Coast happens, they still got backup over here on the West Coast. Say something happens on the West and East, they still got Central. And then on top of that, then they have mobile vehicles that can they actually deploy out that'll have the monitoring equipment inside and they'll run via satellite all the way through. And there'll be something that can continuously move around and they'll just monitor out of that. So that's what we use for our, for our monitoring. And I'll tell you, I haven't, I haven't been any more happier with them than anyone else. I get a report every morning at five o'clock in the morning and it wakes me up at five o'clock in the morning. Sometimes it comes when I'm here, it comes at, it comes at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, I get it, I get a little alert and it tells me my monitoring reports. It tells me if I have any runaways and runaways is a system that just lost offline. It's been gone for a certain amount of days. And that's where our UL certified systems come into play. And it lets me know um, if we've had an alarm event that night so I can call and check on my customer. You know, hey, hey, I'm just calling to let you know that I noticed that your alarm went off last night. Was everything okay? Yes, it was a false alarm. You know, thank you for the follow-up. We want to know that our customers are okay if they have an alarm event. We want to know that our system protect them and help them as well. Because to us, that's what this is about. This is about making sure that they're protected and, they're, and everything's okay. No, oh, fantastic, fantastic. So... So Ruth brought you on the show because, you know, we like to tie in real estate and marketing and, mm -hmm. and, and, and stuff like that to uh, any guest that we comes on. So, I mean, tell us a little bit about, I, I think she said your wife is a realtor yeah. or a real yeah, estate agent right here in town. And so, you know, what have you been doing with real estate agents to kind of give them a differentiator um, and, and teaming up with them to get, you know, your sources out to the, the community? What we do is we set up in as soon as, the, as, soon as any agent is going to meet with their, with their client, they pick a house they're going to buy they get they get a flyer from us and the flyer is a certificate and it gives them a it gives them a percentage off it really depends on on the customer and the agent it really depends on what their needs are the area that they're in uh, some areas it's it, they, they need cameras so then they'll have a package for cameras and a lot of times what we'll do is we'll give free cameras out and customers love free cameras because it's something they don't have to pay for and they are expensive mm -hmm. but for us we buy in bulk so when we buy in bulk, we get a better price. So sure. we're able to pass that off to our customer. I don't ever want to have equipment in the way of that. And I tell every single agent that we work with that you don't ever have to talk prices with the with, with whoever's buying the house. You just got to let them know that whatever they need will make it affordable. We can wrap it into their monthly for them. So it's just a monthly payment. I know buying a house can be, can be very stressful and can really take a lot of money out of your pocket. And you might not have a lot of cash. Mm -hmm. To, to come out with after that. And sometimes you walk out of there and you got a big check at closing and you want to do everything to the house. And security is really the last thing a lot of people think about. And I want to put, and that's because of the price. They're all, everyone's afraid of that price. So what I want to do is I want to take that out of their head and I want to change it. So the only way I can do that is by training any real estate agent that works with us that, hey, it's not, it's not about money with us. 
You know, we're not we're not attacking the customer because we want to make money on them. We, we want market share. That's really what we want. And the value here, we want market share. Uh-huh. I would rather go through and anyone that doesn't have a sign, put a sign in front of their house. I don't want the ones that have the signs already. I want the ones that don't have the signs. Right. Because you want to know why? Because if I put them in between two people that already have the signs and the neighbor comes out and sees this MDI security sign, guess what they're going to do? Oh, you got a security system? Who'd you go with? Obviously, we're with MDI security. Oh, what are you paying? $20 less than you are? Then it's going to happen in the end. When their contract's up, our phones are going to be ringing. It's going to be crazy. That's what I want. I want the customers that don't have security that think it's not a, not that's not uh, it's not affordable for them. I want those customers. I don't want the ones that already have the security system that already got haggled and then already got sold a, a three thousand dollar system because you want to know why? They're going to be very very hesitant to go with us because they're going to be nervous and afraid. What's the catch? That's always what I hear. What's the catch? I'm like our DBA is affordable security alarms for a reason uh-huh. because we're affordable. Right, right. We're not, we're not expensive. No one's ever going to say I'm expensive security alarms. So I want that. I want that brand. I want that name out there. That if you need something done and you and you want protection, you need to go with MDI. Because mm-hmm. we're not going to come out there. Like I have people come to my house, and when they want to sell me something, it's three times, four times what my what what people down the road are paying for. Why? Because I have a nice house. <laughs> <laughs> I can turn right. charge more. That's not fair. And I don't want a customer to ever feel like that when we pull up. When I pull up to a big house, I'm the first thing I'm thinking is, oh man, who was here trying to sell something to them before? And you know what? It's gonna be it's a harder sell for us. And it's a harder time for us to go to a customer that has had that experience and it's had that bad experience. So it's a lot easier for me to put which I always call when we do that, I always say we're putting a sales rep in between them. And mm-hmm. the other one, my my employees are like, What's a sales? What do you mean a sales rep? I said, Because that homeowner is gonna get such a great deal that he's going to share it with his neighbors and his neighbors who didn't get such a great deal are going to be like, you're paying $20 less. And, and then now- we're going to get that phone call. We, we get them, we get them now. So I know that's what happens. So it's just, that's my marketing. That is my marketing working for me. I put my marketing into my customers and you know how they get paid. They get paid because they got $20 less a month. A month. Right. That's their right. payment. But really right. they're making right. money every month. No doubt. No doubt. So do you charge for your signs? For our signs? No, we don't charge for our signs. Or <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I, 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 that's one thing I never thought uh, believed uh, with the current <clears throat> alarm system I have right now is they actually charge me for their sign. I'm like, wait a minute, aren't I marketing for free for you at this point? They charge right? you ten bucks. What do they charge you? Yeah, like ten, twenty dollars or something for one of the stake signs, right? This was years ago, but uh, yeah, yeah, uh, they, still, they still do it. They still do it now. <clears throat> they hide right. it in the fees and all that stuff. It's a sticker fee. They give you the two stickers and a sign. Mm. We, we give you as many stickers as you want. We try to put them on the kids' windows, and then we put them on the back door. We put them on the front door. And if you have a service door in the garage, we'll put it there. Our commercial facilities, we have to, by law, put them on there. Because okay. if there is an alarm event that happens and the police need to get in, they can contact us, and we can always silence the alarm for them. So we have to make sure that in our commercial settings, we do that. And mm. I, we will be getting the um, the target work here in, in Nevada. Um, so we'll have that here. We have it in Chicagoland now where our corporate headquarters is. I'm going to be moving our corporate headquarters here um, to, to Nevada. Uh, looking at, yeah, I'm excited about that. <laughs> yeah. You're going to yeah. save a lot of taxes. I can tell you that yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. Cause I go, I go between Chicago and here in Sacramento. So mm-hmm. that's our, that's our three areas right now. So I'm jumping from place to place to place. And I have technicians in other States that just work out of their house or they work out of a storage area for us. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to buy, buy some, some of the, of my competition out in those areas. I don't really want to put a new, new building in and then, and then start like that. I want to just find someone who's ready to retire and that wants to kind of walk away and maybe they still want to work. Mm-hmm. And I want to give them the opportunity to do that and let us take them up that way because I want to, I want to expand my commercial, um, like my, my commercial area because I found that when I expand the commercial and it gets us out there, I have more trucks rolling around the same DI security on it. And guess what that does for us, our marketing that then produces marketing for us on the other end for all of our uh, residential customers. Mm, got it. And so w- w- the typical package for security and then ongoing monthly, just so that, you know, one of the Ruth's ideas in the beginning when we were talking before the show was, you know, mm-hmm. for, for real estate agents doing this you know, hot period to differentiate themselves and maybe yeah. just offer a gift much like they would do for a home inspection or whatever, or not home inspection, but uh, like a home warranty package, you know, so, uh, you know, kind of all in average pricing, 
uh, with servers ongoing. Okay, we're for a three doors, uh, one or two motions. We don't really ever limit it. If we walk in a house, they have four exterior doors. Then they get four doors in their package. If they have three, they get three doors in their package. And then if they have a basement, which isn't the case always here, mm -hmm. then we put one in the basement, motion in the basement, put a motion on the main floor. We're looking at, for just a basic kit, you're looking at about $389, $389. Okay. Yep. And then a lot of times we'll waive. We'll waive if they're going through one of our selected realtors. We'll waive the activation. We'll waive the um, the installation fee. And we'll also waive the additional, um, if we put any additional parts. Like we'll do, I think it's, um, if I remember correctly, it's like up to four points. And what we do for our point system is every door contact is a point. Every motion is two points, so they get two extra free motions. They can get four extra door contacts if they need them for their windows. So that's what we kind of do just to kind of help them out with that cost. Or we say, hey, you know, if they say we really don't have that, I'll say, okay, well, what can you afford? And they tell us, hey, I can afford 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. Well, pay us 200 bucks, and if you want to pay the other part, pay the other part. If you just can't get it to us, you can't get it to us. You know, we just want to make sure you're secure. If you're not going to pay the other half, do me a huge favor. Refer us out to two or three customers. Get us two or three more customers. We'll be happy with you. That, that's, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much what we try to do. Right. I mean, you, you have a psychology here that is very counterintuitive to especially people who want to run a profitable business right here, George. But how's that worked out for you? I mean, obviously very well because you, your business seems like you're doing very well here. You're expanding. And I'm sure when people kind of hear and, and, and see this, that you're, you're not about just, you know, crunching every dollar and squeezing out of every dollar for mm -hmm. them. I mean, what? part of you says that like, I'm going to do this, right? I'm going to do what's right for the client. And in return, you know, I'm going to believe that I'm going to benefit, you know, we're all going to benefit from this in the long run. In security, we live in the RMR world. That's returnable monthly revenue. So that is every month out of those customers that we have, we make that money on the monthly. Mm -hmm. And that is basically our retirement. So if I treat that customer right and I'm in their home and I'm supplying them great service, excellent customer service. My team is on point. Everything else is falling into place for them. They're not going to leave me in three years. Right. They're not going to leave me in four. They're not going to leave me in five. I'm going to have them for 10 years. And I have some 10-year customers. That's where we, that's where we profit. Mm -hmm. We profit in the longevity of the account. Right. If we don't keep the, the account for longevity, then we don't, we don't profit on it. But we don't have a lot of those because when we're in their home, we're doing the right thing. We have their best interests at mind. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where when I worked in the education industry, I was big on ethics and integrity. And if you and if you don't if you don't believe in doing the right thing when nobody's looking, <laughs> then you're never going to make it in this industry. Right. Are, they're gonna eat you up and spit you out. That's why there's such a high turnaround in this industry. That's why you got door knockers that door knock all summer long. They take the rest of the year off because they're out there. They're making that $2,300 on a customer. So when they sell a hundred of those, yes, they can take the rest of the year off because I, I, I think they take the rest of the year off because they got to go to church the rest of the year to <laughs> <laughs> what they've done. Um, that's kind of my way of looking at it. Cause I've sat down with guys like that and said, I can open up this huge door knocking group with you and we can make a lot of money. And I said, well, what's that look like? And they explained the philosophy. And I said, that goes against everything I want to do because you know what happens to those customers. Those are the ones they go in and they lie to the customer. And then the next, the next month, somebody else is in there giving them a better deal and they're ripping out the equipment or in two years, like over here to up, upgrade your equipment. They're not even, they're a security company and they'll go there and they'll upgrade their equipment. <clears throat> they'll put a new system in and that's the other security company won't have a runaway report. That'll tell you when your accounts go completely offline and they're gone for a certain amount of uh, days or hours, whatever you have it set on and mm -hmm. they won't catch it in time. And then three months down the road, you're getting a call from Brink saying, Hey, you haven't made your security payment and your security's not online. And then they're like, well, yeah, because I'm with I'm with Vivint now. They came here and they upgraded my equipment because they said it was due for an upgrade. I'm like, well, that wasn't your security company. Well, they said I was. Guess what that customer now is in? Oh. Two legal binding contracts that they wow. cannot get out of wow. because they trusted the person that was in their home. Holy mackerel. And that wasn't a company that was in their home. That was a yeah. sales rep. That wasn't what we call as an authorized dealer. And those mm. are the ones you want to stay away from. Someone comes to your house and says, I am an authorized dealer. All that means 
is there is a big company up here that is putting all these little people down here to go out and do all their work so they can make a lot of money. And these people down here got to do what they got to do to sell the alarm. Wow. Those are the ones you got to stay away from. Those are the ones you don't want in your house. And there, I shouldn't say all of them because some of them, some of them are out there. They're yeah. doing the right thing. They're sure. doing the opposite. But the majority of them that are out there from my experience are not thinking of would I want someone to do this to my mom? Would I want someone to do this to my, to my grandma? Because they, that's a lot of times we forget when we're in sales is the person we're dealing with across the table is somebody's mom, somebody's sister, somebody's daughter, somebody's son. We keep forgetting that that's karma. And I, and I believe heavily in karma. And I think that's why I'm as successful as I am is because karma is always the first thing I think of. If I, if we don't do the right thing, it's going to come back on us. But if we do the right thing, and even if we don't come out on top, it's gonna someone's gonna pay it forward to us later on down the road, and that's how I landed the contracts I have. That's how I have the work I have is because it's karma. And people will tell you, and I can put employees on here. You can call one right now. They'll tell you this guy doesn't quit until he gets it fixed. I don't leave job sites till it's done. I don't. I don't look for the quick. It must be bad. It must be bad equipment. Let's replace it. Because I'll tell you something right now, it, it, it doesn't happen. You don't get a lot of bad equipment out of these out of these warehouses. It's because you got you've, you've got um, poor training and poor performance in the per, performance in the field. Because your 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 installer isn't adequately trained to put in that material. And I've been on that end. I've been not fully trained on something and been putting it in and had to figure it out on the fly. I don't like doing it, but I'll do it because sometimes we don't have time to do it because. That is the solution for your customer. You need to figure it out. You need to get it in. You have to rely on your manufacturer to basically get you through the training in the field. Mm. And that's, those are the, those are the things that I think set us apart from a lot of the other companies that are out there. No, oh, fantastic, fantastic. Oh, so I have a, another question on cameras, right? So mm -hmm. two questions actually. And first question is, what's more important, an interior camera or an exterior house camera? I don't like interior cameras, and my oh. my my wife is not a fan. <laughs> Me either, because because that's my second camera question. here. I'm gonna put a camera here and put a camera here and put a camera here, and she just looked at me and says, "Uh uh," and then right. she gave me her reasons to why she doesn't like indoor cameras, and I said, "Okay, right." Because that's my, that's we'll my second question is like, how do you how do you ensure that no one's tapping into your system, right, with your interior cameras? Especially they if just had that. Did you guys remember reading about that out in Texas? The ADT, no. the ADT technician that had access to all these people's cameras and was in there looking in on on the uh, one of the customers' um, kids' cameras. Wow. That was if you guys Google it, you'll find an ADT technician um, logging into cameras, and it'll pop up. It was it was a huge thing. They they had a lot of stuff that happened with that. Um, right. We use we use encryption software first off, and then when we put in your system, we use a DDNS, and it's something that we pick, and you guys, and then like our, our end user will pick as well. We'll come up with a with like a like a name like uh, MDI Moni dot mm -hmm. whatever you want it to be dot com, and then you have a password, and then you have your username. So they have to match your DDNS. They have to match your username and your password. So those are three levels, and we always want to stay at least at three levels of protection when we're doing cameras. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you can pick your DDNS, not just your not just your IP address. You want a, a very um, specific um, word and all phases and phrases in there. Then you want to have your username and your password, and you want to make sure you change those. And we don't we don't really suggest you to change them regularly. Like every thirty days, change your password. But anytime you feel like you maybe have given that password out too many times or you have it on too many devices. It's not a bad idea to change it, especially now because you can save all your passwords on your phone and all you need sometimes is just a passcode to get in there and you can see all your passwords. Mm -hmm. So anytime you're leaving your phone not near you or your iPad not by you, it's probably a good a good thing to do to pick a time when you want to start changing and rotating out those passwords. But when it comes to cameras, I mean, can someone get in your cameras? Yeah, they can. Anybody can do anything anymore. I mean, I don't put anything past anybody. So, I mean, right now, you know, someone can look in your window. It's no different. It's no different <laughs> than someone looking in your window. Are you going to close the blinds? All right. When you close the blinds, no one can look in your windows, right? Same thing with your cameras. Figure out what kind of security you need, how, how often you want to change your password, and guess what? Nobody can look at your cameras if you're changing your password, you know, every 60 days or every 90 days. Pick one. Pick one and go with it. 
because there, there's no way anyone's going to be able to keep up with you if you're changing your passwords on a regular basis like that to protect yourself. Nobody's ever going to be able to keep up with that. You know, someone might get in here and there, but it's no different than someone might look in your window here and there when you leave your blinds open. It's no, it's really no different. <clears throat> Absolutely. No, I, now this has been enlightening here, George, because I can tell you, you know, if, if you truly can deliver on all the things that you're telling us today, I, I, I can tell you, you're, you're going to just crush this market because like I said, I mean, when Ruth told me, you know, you would security, I'm like, Oh God. Right. Like you guys have the reputation in your industry, unfortunately, like the, you know, the solar guys or whatever, where you're coming in and they're upselling you all this stuff. And, uh, and really you don't get the type of customer service that's been terrible on the back end too, as well, getting, you know, hold of somebody that explained things. And then, you know, I, I've had security systems in the past where, you know, if something goes wrong, they're like, we're going to charge you, even though we're, we're, we're in this like three year window, right. Uh, charge you for, you know, because you forgot how to like, change your password to come out hundred. I'm like, really? That's, <laughs> we just had a customer. We, we do a lot of service work for, and th those door knockers that go out and then they sell the accounts to these big companies. And then next thing you know, they have no one to service the equipment in, in Chicago. So we have an account. We were actually just at a customer the other day and they said, Oh, oh yeah, we'll send someone out to change the battery. We're going to charge you a dollar more a month. Now, now that we had to send somebody out and I'm like, you're going to charge me a dollar more a month. <clears throat> because I got to, you got to send someone out to change my batteries. You put the wireless system in my house. So at least you could do is charge me for the batteries. Yes. But don't charge me to uh, an extra fee every month because you had to send someone out to take care of my batteries. And that's the one thing that's, that is just crazy. I just can't fathom it. Or, or here's the new one. This is, this is the new one. If you can change the equipment yourself, then we won't charge you to send out a service technician but what we will do is we'll give you a credit of $25 on your bill. So guess what happens to that customer that feels like they're paying way too much already? They're going to try to do it themselves. Well, in Chicago, we had an event that happened. It was actually in Bloomington, Illinois. There was a lady that got on a ladder, tried to change her motion. She was 87 years old. She fell off her step stool and broke her hip. Ugh. Who's liable? Security company said, well, you we gave it as a choice. We didn't tell her she had to do it. What do you do? What do you do in a situation like that? I'll tell you something right now. If someone told my 87 year old grandma to get on a ladder, I'd be like, uh, uh, like, no, that's not the company you want to be with. Right. I mean, those, those are the battles that we have. And I can tell you right now, just firsthand, this is probably the hardest and the most dirtiest industry I've ever been in. Huh. It, it's hard. It's hard for when you want to do the right thing. It's hard. It's even harder when you want to do the right thing when no one's looking, it's even harder because you've all these people out here doing all this stuff. And then when you try to give a customer a really good deal, they look at you like there's a catch. Right. There's a catch. It's, there's it's gotta be a catch. What's the catch? Right. right. There yeah. is no catch. There is no catch. This is what we're about. And if somebody out there can tell me that we do this otherwise, or that there's a, there, there's something that's better out there or someone's doing something better than what we're doing, please tell us because we, we're not afraid of change. Mm -hmm. We love change. I am a pro advocate of change management. If, there is a, a more efficient and a better way of doing something. I'm all ears. But until then, I like things to be done my way at my company. Because at the end, I'm the one that's responsible. I'm the one that's got to talk to the customer. I'm the one that has to go through all that stuff. And I don't want that. I don't, I don't want that upset customer. We're going to have it. We've had it. Everyone's had it. And I'm able to talk to them and explain, okay, well, that's not, that's not how we do things. And then to come and find out that it wasn't even us that was out there. It was someone out there trying to change over our one of our systems. Like I said, happened to somebody else. We've had it happen to us. Mm. We got a customer calling me crying, saying, "I just got a bill from from another company, and they don't know what to do." And I'm like, "Well, you have two contracts. We're gonna have to get the other company on the line and see what we can do." And nine out of ten times, the other company isn't gonna let them out of their contract because hmm. they changed their equipment. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. they, that's their new catch. <laughs> you, you're here. We're here to upgrade your equipment. We're here to upgrade. You're eligible for an upgrade. No, you're not eligible for an upgrade. You have a contract, homeowners. Do not do it until you grab the original contract you signed and you look at the number on the top and you call them and say, I am calling from this address. This is my account number. And I have, what's your name? Give me your ID in my house right now trying to sell me an alarm system. Mm -hmm. That's what they need to do. But a lot of times people are so excited and they don't have time to do that or they, they just they have too much trust, too much trust in the person that's in their home. Right, absolutely. I mean- they're supposed to be the security company for God's sakes. <laughs> yep. And for us, for us, it works out great when we, when we go to a lot of customers house because uh, we are 
um, we, we are local. So for us, you know, we're local. So people will know who we are. And then on top of that, you know, my wife's a real estate agent. She's also um, a veteran. Um, she's part owner of the company as well. So, I mean, we got female owned, veteran owned. I'm a minority. So we've got everything that just hits right there for every single situation. It works well for us in the commercial industry and government projects because they got to check those boxes to make sure they have all that stuff. It works right. great for us when we're when we're in a building that said, you know, we got to make sure we have all our boxes checked. And I always ask them, well, what are you what are you looking for in your security contractor? Like, what do they need to be? I know you got to have a certain number of minorities, or you got to hire somebody from the area. That's what we deal with a lot in Chicago. Is if you do a project, a big project in an area, you have to hire someone from that area. So if it's a union project, then we have to go to the hall and we have to get a union guy that's from that area. And we got to pull them out of the hall and we got to bring them in and let them and let let them work on the project. A lot of times that's the stipulation that's in our contracts, and we just we got to follow it. Yeah, we don't always like what we got to do, but guess what? There's rules for a reason. Sometimes they're there to be broken for some people, and a lot of times they're there because we have to follow them because it's what we have to do. Because if we can't follow the simple rules and follow those, it opens up it opens up that that big old flag of saying, well, what are they not? What are they doing wrong when we're not looking? Right. And right. I don't want that company. I want to make sure when we're doing something, it's because we're we're doing the right thing. And I want them to say, well, they were doing this, this, and this when when they didn't have to be. So and that kind of takes us off the light and it leaves us alone. We can continue to do what we do and help our customers. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's very good. So I'm going to add, uh, you know, finding a good security company is like having a good dentist and a good doctor and a good mechanic, right? Once you, once you find a really good one, one, it really, they really stand out because the, unfortunately yeah. the competition, <laughs> right? The experience, like you said, you know, what you describe is really, that's what's out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a uh, you know really refreshing to see this, and you know I'm going to be calling yeah. you because I'm buying a new home here, uh, George. Awesome! Well, yeah, I, bye -bye. I mean, I have, I have uh, PMLs from Target that have sent emails in on our work performance. They, there was mm -hmm. a there was a location we were doing in Chicago. Five years, five years they've had this trouble on their fire panel. No one's been able to figure it out. I forgot how many technicians and how many companies they had out there. No one was able to figure it out. No one was able to fix it. I was on site for two and a half hours. I fixed it. I fixed hmm. the issue on the panel. You want to know what the issue was on the panel? What? When they said it happened a couple days after they opened the store. And I asked them, I said, well, what did you guys change after the store? Well, they have a, an iPad they carry around, and they have a, such an awesome system. It keeps track of all their work orders, everything they do. So they told me. We had some phone lines changed. <laughs> I hook my little, my little uh, module up on one end. I go into the data room, and I look at the wall, and I was like, whoa. It's wires everywhere. Everything's everywhere. I'm like, be here a while. So I traced everything back. I went back, read the label on what it said, what phone lines were working. I went in there. I took two wires and I went like this. And I went downstairs and I disconnected the one and I put it in the other jack like it was supposed to be. And the panel said, system's all normal. Oh, wow. I was like, you got to be kidding me. So I, uh, so I'll, you all, even though you get that, you still cut it down. And then I rebooted the whole panel and it came back up. System's normal. I waited usually about 30 minutes on a fire panel because it'll come back with either has ground faults or something else. System's all normal. It was perfect. In the end, that uh, PML, he ended up sending an email in saying, it's been five years, had a lot of companies out here. They haven't been able to get it done. Had George from MDI out here. He got it done. He got it fixed. And he goes, I can tell you what, I walked down and I doubted him all the way and he pulled through for me. Yeah, I fixed everything I get in front of. Fantastic. There's not anything I can't fix. There so if there's an issue, I'm going to get to the bottom and I'm going to figure out, even if I don't know it, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to find the issue. I'm going to find the problem because it's all, it's all electronics. You take your meter, you look at, you just meter everything. You meter everything to find out what it's supposed to be getting the true voltage. And it's always going to be right there. Your meter is going to tell you all the work for you. So really it's $179 for a really good meter. It's definitely worth it. And that's kind of what I do with my guys. I equip them with the right equipment, the best equipment, so they can go out there and be efficient, get the job done fast, because we have a lot of work. So we don't have time to be in the location mm -hmm. milking your clock for eight to 10 hours. Like <laughs> right. to do. We want to be in, get it fixed, get out, move on to the next, because guess what's going to happen? If we're in there, we're getting it fixed, and we're saving you money, you're going to use us on everything. Exactly. So right. we're going to get that. We're going to get that work the right way versus getting it the, the easy way by just sitting there and taking our time and doing everything that we can do to to make an eight hour day out of the job. 
No, oh, fantastic, fantastic. Well, we're four minutes to the hour. I didn't think uh, we would be interviewing a security person for 55 minutes, but uh, it happened today on episode, what, 337 today, uh, yes. Ruth? Yes, right? sir, so, 337, amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I like the marketing already. You came prepared with the hat. So, uh, Ruth, oh, yeah. if you just you know just put the number on one eight four four MDI for you. Got it. I don't know if you uh, uh, can put that on the across the screen here. But any last thoughts before we let you go, and then give Ruth uh, last thoughts on the show? I, I just love what you guys are doing here. I think this is awesome, and I'm just happy to be a part of this. I, I really am, and I hope that out of this, um, I'm not looking for customers just start calling me and coming at me and I'm, I'm not the, the the solution to everyone's problem out there but to some people I will be and to anybody who wants help and anybody who doesn't even want to go with us but wants us to look over what they have and what contract they did get we're more than welcome to look it over for them they don't they don't need to be obligated to buy from us or to go with us I want to see what everyone's being told and what they're getting because that helps me to make my company even better so yeah. to anyone that has any problems any questions please call me even if it's a 15, 20 minute conversation, I can talk to you about it. Even if you got a sensor you got an issue with and no one's been able to fix it, call us. We'll come out, we'll fix it. Mm. We'll come out and fix it. And I promise you, it won't cost you an arm and a leg. Right. And you're it not a good conversation. Sometimes we don't even charge a customer when we come out to fix stuff. Sometimes yeah. it's just a great conversation. Yeah. It's a great conversation. So, you know, there's no charge to you today. I learned a lot from you. If I yeah. get able to take something away from you, then I'm happy. Yeah. Fantastic. George. That's pretty much what Massiest. I have. Yeah, thank you for coming on. Ruth, I back to you. any last words before we end the show? Well, you know, I see such a great marketing opportunity here for George with what I do. Right. And <laughs> George, you know, I, uh, I'm the social media gal here and I know how to advertise your business. And one thing I am going to promise you that I'm going to do, we sell 3,000 homes a month in Las Vegas. And I am going to send a message to all those agents to contact you for the best security system with the best, uh, I would call you the most ethical su service security system. So I I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna do what all I can do for you. And uh, I'd love to see your business grow. And I know that, you know, when we can save people money, mm -hmm. that's huge. That's absolutely huge. And I, I there, here, Aaron Taylor here is the real estate guy in Las Vegas and he's watching this morning and Aaron um, is one of the top five real estate agents in Las Vegas when it comes to number of sales. And I think Aaron would just love to talk to you because Aaron's all about giving the best service to his clients. And I'm sure you'll be hearing from Aaron and uh, you'll be amazed at, at how much he has a radio show as well. So okay. anyway, yeah. we've got lots of connections for you, George, and we yeah. welcome you to Las Vegas and we're very Thank excited. You. Glad to be here. Very excited. Yeah, very uh, excited. You share everything. Yeah. We need more people like you in business, man, because you know, when times are good, I mean, we've had, you know, 10 good years of economic activity and I can tell you the, the sure sign of, of when a downturn is going to happen is when people get complacent with their customer service, complacent mm -hmm. with what you just said about like, you know, doing things not right with, people aren't looking, they mm -hmm. surpass, you know, they overlook that yeah. and your industry in particular, you know, I mean, unfortunately the reputation isn't as great, but we need more, more people like you and more. Well, I'm going like to raise you, the man. bar and change the standard yeah. in Las Vegas oh, fantastic. nationwide. And you'll be amazed at how um, welcoming this town is to people like you. Yeah. It's yeah, because we desperately need it. I mean, it's so <laughs> right. And it's so refreshing we, and we can spot it. Yeah. A mile away when someone does a good job and is ethical. Mm -hmm. So, yep, I'm excited. Can't wait. All right. Well, I look forward to helping you and uh, thank you for coming on the show. And Aaron yep. Taylor was here and um, he said thank you. Uh, and I, I know you're going to hear from him. And so, uh, yep. uh, great show. Just absolutely yeah. great show. Uh, I have to segue just a minute to tell everybody that we are having an ethics class. Speaking of ethics, <laughs> speaking of <laughs> <laughs> on October 29th, that's this coming Thursday, and it's from two to five. And if you go to bee.vegas, bee, -E, that's like a little bee you see up in the corner there, bee.vegas, and sign up. And uh, we have a uh, refreshment served when we have our two to five class. And um, we look forward to, to seeing everybody on Thursday. Um, have a wonderful week. And George, I can't thank you enough. Thank Matt, you. Thank you so much. Yep, absolutely. All right. Have a great week, everybody.
You too. And tune in next Saturday. All right. Have a good one. We'll leave with that on the screen. <laughs>